Thank you very much. We are still here at OIDC where we witnessed the launch of the True Apostolic Church uh, here. Uh, so I'm meeting the priest, uh, Priest Amoksana, who will take us through uh, what has transpired. Thank you very much. Kindly introduce yourself and also maybe even your position in the church. So thank you very much. I'm uh, Priest Joseph Mwala Amuksana. I'm uh, a priest based in uh, the Taoke Eastern Province. And I'm uh, the spokesperson for the True Apostolic Church. Okay, thank you very much. Maybe kindly take us through uh, what transpired today. Okay, so today we had a very beautiful launch service, which was uh, well attended by over 1,000 uh, souls, 1,054 souls to be specific. And the service was uh, conducted, officiated by Bishop Julius Mwanshidindi from uh, Tanzania, who stood in the place of our dear apostle uh, Kabongo Kantu, Christophe, from the Democratic Republic of Congo who could not make it for the divine service because of uh, other logistical issues to do with his passport and clearance from that country. Otherwise, we had a very wonderful divine service, very beautiful fellowship. Okay, thank you very much. So what has uh, brought this uh, uh, kind of uh, a launch to this particular level uh, since uh, we, are, we have heard from different uh, members uh, that this is a breakaway kindly confirm what led to all this, if also what we are hearing is true. Okay, so yeah, you are right. The True Apostolic Church is uh, a breakaway church from the New Apostolic Church Zambia Limited. And uh, the breakaway was uh, necessitated by a number of uh, fundamental uh, doctrinal misunderstandings that uh, were pronounced Firstly, by the chief apostle of the New Apostolic Church International, uh, Jean Luke Schneider, on the 20th of September 2022, in which, among other major pronouncements, was that uh, come January 1st, 2023, there will be women ordination into ministry at all levels of ministry, from the deacon up to the chief apostle. So that was the fundamental issue that led now to many other issues that were revisited, that were pronounced before that, but uh, had not really come to the fore. Among them is the issue of uh, the acceptance of homose homosexual tendencies and practices in the New Apostolic Church International and the New Apostolic Church Zambia Limited. So the New Apostolic Church recognizes and uh, actually uh, accepts the LGBTQ plus members to the effect that uh, they actually uh, solemnize their partnerships, provided that they are registered with their local local councils. Not so far away from our jurisdiction here, we have uh, just in the neighborhood within our Southern African region, South Africa, where these uh, practices have taken effect, in fact, dating back to 2015, when some brothers gay brothers and sisters were actually also uh, blessed in their partnerships. Apart from that, through the NAC Rainbow, an organization that is uh, duly registered and recognized in the New Apostolic Church that champions the rights of uh, the LGBTQ plus members of the New Apostolic Church, some of those gay brothers have actually been ordained into ministries in Europe. And so that is also another fundamental difference that brought about uh, the breakaway. Thirdly, there's also the issue of uh, the New Apostolic Church being registered as a company, a limited company, by a guarantee. So most of the members were not privy to this information. And in fact, because of these uh, discussions that we engaged in, it came to the fore that actually they are, we are not members of the church, but we are mere volunteers because it is a company that is registered with shareholding as the, the apostles and a few others that are shareholders in the New Apostolic Church. So those are the fundamental differences that actually brought us to this point. Suffice to mention 
But before the breakaway, we had engagements with the then New Apostolic Church to which we, we belonged. But uh, those channels, exhaustive as they were, they didn't yield any results. And so we decided to, to break away so that we can pursue our faith in a biblical manner on, based on biblical tenets and in an environment that inspires us to worship God in truth and in spirit. Okay, thank you. Others have argued that uh, with regards to ordaining women into ministry, uh, that it's just a pronouncement that has to take effect or that has to come into effect next year. Why not the wait? Why couldn't you have waited? Why haven't you exhibited patience with regards to seeing if the pronouncements come to fruition? Well, we, 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 want, we want to be very real. You know, in 2019, the chief apostle addressed the international world, the new apostolic world, where he announced that with effect from Pentecost of 2019, the new concept of ministry was going to kick in, okay? And uh, come Pentecost that year, the new concept of ministry was rolled out. When the chief apostle makes a pronouncement, I, I want the general public to understand the kind of authority that is invested in the chief apostle. The chief apostle is the head of the New Apostolic Church International and all other affiliate churches, district churches. And so he is the final authority. He gives uh, a doctrinal and administrative uh, pronouncements that are binding for the church. So it is not a matter of debate that if people would have waited up to January 1, then... Uh, that there was a possibility that those pronouncements are not going to take effect. The fact of the matter is those pronouncements are going to take effect come January 1. Women are going to be ordained into ministry. It's not a subject of debate. This also was cemented in the many engagements that we had with the church. Mind you, let me also bring it to the attention of uh, the members of the public that are interested to know that uh, in Zambia, the DC church here sat out of the pressure that we had mounted then as defenders, and they came up with resolutions, which resolutions pointed to the fact that uh, as District Apostle Area 28, the ordination of women could not take place now, that it was not yet possible to ordain women into ministry, but uh, in the future, that was going to take place. So the issue of ordaining women into ministry is a matter of policy. Once the chief apostle makes a pronouncement, that is church policy, and the church takes that direction. Okay, thank you very much. What sets apart TAC from NAC in terms of principles or doctrinal uh, uh, type of uh, uh, beliefs? So thank you very much. As you might be aware that we are a breakaway church, and our breakaway is uh, stemming from very, very specific points of doctrinal uh, misunderstandings. First of all, the first fundamental difference is that the true apostolic church is not a limited company. It's a, an organization, a society that is registered with the Societies Act and the Registrar of Society. So ours is not a limited company. So that is the fundamental difference number one. And in this society, all the members are part of the church and they own the church. There's no single one person who would claim ownership of the church. So that is one fundamental difference. The other fundamental difference that borders on doctrine is that uh, based on biblical uh, uh, truth and uh, belief that no women will be ordained in the new apostolic church. And that is not a subject for debate because we are a Bible-based church and we believe in the guidance of the church and not in the personal conceived ideologies of a human being that are disguised as inspirations of the Holy Spirit as it, it is claimed in the other church where we came from. So that is another fundamental difference. The other fundamental difference is that we stick to the tenets of God our creator who created man and woman. Homosexuality has no room in the true apostolic church. The other fundamental difference is that uh, in the true apostolic church, we are going to stick to the traditional 
hierarchy of ministry. You might be aware that it was phased out to pave way for the rectorship that came in to phase out the ministries of, of evangelists up to district elder. As a, through Apostolic Church, we are going back to those fundamental uh, ministries that form the backbone of the Church of Christ. So in brief, I think that is what I can point to as the fundamental differences between we as the true apostolic church and the new apostolic church Zambia Limited. Yes, following these divisions, we have seen uh, some, if not most of the members of NAC, uh, more especially coming back from Lukulu, uh, they are staying away from church. They are not going either to TAC or NAC. Uh, so what's your word to such members? Our word to our brothers and sisters is that uh, the true apostolic church has been launched, it's been registered, and we, they are free. We are inviting them to come and worship with us, it may be in a classroom, because we do not want to congregate in areas that are disputed. Could be in a classroom, and they are more than welcome. The true apostolic church, for any information, is a church that is com composed of brothers and sisters that profess Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, who want to align their lives in accordance with the gospel of Jesus Christ and allow themselves to be prepared for the return of Christ. So our message to those members is our doors are open. Please let them come through. If there are any questions, they are free to contact our ministers there. I think Priest Kazungo is a very prominent figure there. They can go to him and you give them guidance. So there is no need for them to stay back home now. Now those, uh, the door of grace has been opened and we bidding everyone a welcome into the True Apostolic Church. On the other side, we have the Chief Apostle as the head uh, of the church, uh, in running the church. Now, when it comes to NAC, who leads the church? And if we have such uh, do we have, can you avail the name of the person? So our leader in the True Apostolic Church is the Apostle Christophe Kantu Kabong from the Democratic Republic of Congo. And by the grace of God, we witness today in the divine service that we have a bishop from Tanzania, Bishop Manshirindi from Tanzania. So the, the church has a leadership. The chief apostle, for your own information, is an apostle who was given a special responsibility. So the, the basic ministry upon which he operates is that of an apostle. And the true apostolic church as an, as an apostle in a leader in a, the apostle Kabong. Okay, thank you very much. On the emblem again, uh, we see uh, a similar emblem like such of the new apostolic church. Uh, maybe kindly explain with regards to the same. So in regards to the emblem, those issues will be clarified. We are aware of the... Uh, insinuations that have been made by the other camp and so for now we, we that is work in progress and at the right time we shall come and announce and unveil our official emblem okay thank you very much unless you left uh, anything thank you very much i'm very grateful to you lupulu fm for the wonderful job that you have done to be able to broadcast this very special memorable divine service that was here at OIDC. And thanks to you, many of our brothers and sisters, even from Lukulu and other Pathland areas, were able to follow the divine service. And we can only wish you all the best. May God bless you. But please, we pray and ask you that you keep your doors open. Because this is not the end. It's just the beginning of our partnerships. There will be many more. Remember, the Apostle Kabongo will be here next year, God willing. And so when he, when, he, when he comes, we shall still uh, knock on your doors that you can still come back and uh, be able to cover our divine services. So from OIDC, we want to wish all our brothers and sisters everywhere God's blessings and we wish them all the best. Let them worship their God in truth and in spirit. I thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. I was just talking to uh, Priest uh, Amuksana, who happens to also be uh, one of the top leaders uh, that are uh, leading the church 
uh, in terms of uh, the secretariat, uh, who was just explaining to what transpired. Uh, just now, the members have already gone as the launch has been completed or has already been done. So we just had a chance to talk to uh, the priest who was explaining as to what led to this, uh, what led uh, this uh, uh, former New Apostolic Church uh, to uh, this uh, uh, launch. We heard it all emanated from, from pronouncements made by the chief apostle of the New Apostolic Church, uh, that's Luke Schneider, Jean Luke Schneider, uh, with regards to the ordaining of women that has to take place early next year and also partial treatment towards uh, homosexual relationships or marriages. So those are uh, some of the key uh, key differences uh, that have led to the breakaway of uh, the uh, this uh, new for, from the church from the new apostolic church. So we witnessed uh, the service or the launch that was supposed to be attended by the lead apostle uh, in the name of uh, Kabongo. Uh, Joseph Kabongo from uh, from the Democratic Republic of Congo.